Well, hello guys, Mr. G here, and we're going to be doing another video today for the grade 10. We're going to be solving a question paper the learners just wrote this past Friday. But it can help to all those learners that didn't write this specific paper. It can give you an idea of, of what can be asked and how it could be. This question paper would have only 75 marks. We're going to answer in two parts. We're going to... Um, the, total mar the total questions were eight questions. We're going to answer the first four in this video and then another video for the other four, um, for the other four questions. I hope it helped. I hope it will uh, clarify some issues. But this, this topic was quite simple and the question paper was also quite simple. Okay? So without saying more, we're going to start. And remember, question one is generally a multiple choice. The question said the transverse pulse is the pulse where and then give you options. So all you have to know is to know the definition of transverse pulse. Now, remember tra transverse pulse, the, the particles will move perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the pulse. If you know the uh, definition, you should be sort sorted. So the correct answer here is B, say a transverse pulse is the pulse where the particles move perpendicular, important, particles will move perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the pulse. So real fast to recap, if this is the pulse here, you can see the pulse can be moving in that direction, but the particles, the particles in the pulse can be uh, moving up and down, for example you can see that they move perpendicular to the motion of the pulse. The second question said the distance between any two consecutive points that the wave which are in phase is and they give you options. All you have to know is to learn definitions. And guys, definitions are very important. Distance between any two successive points that the wave which are in phase is what we call wavelength. That is the correct answer. It's also going to be B. So if you have a transverse wave represented, let's quickly do it here. Points that are moving in phase could be, for example, this point and these points are moving in phase. This point and this point are moving in phase. But there is more, this point. So the distance between any two consecutive ones this distance between the two that are the consecutive one, this one here, is what we call wavelength, okay? Or this one here, for instance, but be the first two consecutive points that are in phase. And let me clarify something here. If I have a point here, for instance, on this, the yellow one, this one, the, those points are very close to each other, but this and the red one are not in phase. So be careful with that one. All you have to identify is what points are in phase. Let's take that point away from them. Question 1.3. Sonar can be used to determine the depth of the ocean because sound, sound can be, and they give you some properties of sound. Now, I want you to note something. In actual fact, all these, all of them, are properties of sound. So all of these ones are properties of sound or a wave. All waves have these properties, but it's not about all of them are the properties. It's about which one, which of all those properties is the one that can help us with a sonar. Now, what is a sonar? Now, what is a sonar and what does it do? Here is a representation of a shape, beautiful shape, on a on C. This is look like the shapes I play uh, video games. So anyway, this this shape need to know how deep is the ocean. So it will send signals, wave signals, to the bottom of the sea, and obviously it will bounce on the sea. When these signals bounce on the sea, it go all the way down. It will be reflected back like the echo and, and you know what an echo is the same happen and this shape can measure the distance or the time travel down and up so this is a sonar so what of all those properties there are many properties but which one of all of them is the one that help with the sonar will be reflection of sound or a uh, sound will be reflected so the correct answer is a note all of them all of these all of these are properties of waves okay now we're going to 1.4 electromagnetic wave are produced by how does electromagnetic wave are produced well 
that one is an accelerating charge that generates an electric field and that electric field as it changes it generated a magnetic field it's a little bit more complicated than that but that is what actually happened that is what you learn at school is quite simple 1.5 and last one of question one a positively charged object has more electrons than neutrons no good more protons than neutrons no good equal amount of protons and electrons no more protons than electrons and that one is the correct answer remember if you have an object where did have more protons than electrons because electrons will move from this object to another then this object will have a positive charge in this case the charge is of one unit of one coulombs and you will see this one later on but that is the main thing here so that is question 1.5 guys let's go to question 2 very simple the following diagram show two approaching pulses illustrate the resultant pass at the moment the two pulses cross each other so now 2.1 those pulses eventually will cross each other okay and then a superposition will happen as well as interference will happen because the two pulses are on top the pulse the resultant pulse is always going to be the addition of the two pulses but the two of them are positive so in this case you will have a pulse that is greater than the other pulse let's see if can i draw this one a little bit better it's difficult to draw these pulses really here but there we go now what we need to know is that this pulse must be bigger than the other one so in other words this one will be the addition of three centimeters plus the other one was 1.5 centimeters so that is what you must know here 1.5 centimeters guys this is quite simple this must be the addition of the other two and therefore it must be a bigger uh, pulse this is superposition which is the next question here the next question say name and state the type of superposition they telling you superposition the type of superposition present here so 2.2 question 2.2 what type of superposition will be present here it will be constructive interference it will be constructive interference now they want you to state what is in actual fact constructive interference so what is constructive interference in when two disturbances meet in a medium and the resultant pulse is bigger than the two other pulses which is the case here which is the case there where you see that they add each other Question 2.3, what is the magnitude of the resultant pulse? Guys, we did it already. We add 3 plus 1,5 and this will give you a 4,5 centimeters. That is the resultant pulse. Illustrate the two pulses after they cross each other and something important. The pulses cross each other. They don't bond bands with each other. So what is going to happen? The 1,5 will continue in the same direction. And this one is question 2.4. So you will have the 1,5 that already crossed the other one and the 3 in the other direction there. So this is what we have. This is not at scale. It doesn't need to be at scale. This is 1,5 centimeter that continue in the direction that was moving before. And this one here, this one is the, it would be the red position. This one is the three centimeters and will continue moving in the direction that was doing before. So this is question two, quite easy, quite simple, very, very simple guys. You can get the, I'm sure 10 marks out of 10. Let's go to question three, which is also simple. It's also simple. The wave motion illustrated in the sketch below completes one vibration in 0.5 seconds. And then you can see the drawing there. Now, how long will it take for four complete waves to pass a specific point? Now, we're going to use what I told you in the previous video. Please go and watch it if you think you will struggle. One wave. One wave a vibration means one wave is is the same. Let's write it here. One wave will cover the distance, whatever distance they give you, in 0, 0,5 seconds. Now the question is four complete waves. So here is 
four way how much it will take and here remember you have to do cross product so you will have at the end four times zero comma five equal to x times one which is x and the answer is going to be two seconds so that is the first question or question 3.1 that is the answer there and always this is very easy you can use it to calculate period you can use it to calculate frequency or wavelengths or anything okay now what is the amplitude of the wave so here on the on the left i'm going to represent the amplitude is always the distance from rest position which is this one this one is the rest position or equilibrium to the maximum displacement and the ma maximum displacement will be there so this one here is the amplitude I'm going to write just a so if you come here they giving you all the distance from bottom to top from a trough to the crest but they don't want that guys they want only this distance here so it's not even needed calculation if this one is 20 means this one is 10 centimeters and this one here is also 10 centimeters so the amplitude is going to be 10 centimeters very very easy guys no calculations needed so we're moving on we're moving on what is the period of the way remember period is the time for one way and that is given to you one vibration takes 0, 0,5 seconds so the period is going to be equal to i'm going to write it here 0, 0,5 seconds very 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 easy what is the wavelength of the wave and now we're going to the um to the picture wavelengths remember wavelength is the distance between any two consecutive point in phase or so the length of one wave here if you see here from here to here is one wave this one here will represent one wave and from there to here which is marked there is the second wave all right so two wave is two meters therefore one wave will be half which is one one meter and that is the wavelength let's not write the word let's write the symbol so the wavelength here is equal to one meter it is in the picture the picture is showing you the two meters these two meters is in actual fact two wavelengths i show you here in this point you can see one wave there and the other wave there so it's two wave two wave will take two meters therefore one wave will take one meter and now they ask you to do some calculation very very simple calculation really guys and the first calculation is the frequency of the wave Remember, frequency is equal to 1 divided by period. Therefore, is 1 divided by period, which we already have there, 0, 0,5. And therefore, frequency is going to be equal to 2 hertz. Very simple. Really, this question is really, really simple. But it won't be much more difficult than this. And the final question is going to be speed of the wave. And then you also have to just look for the formula. You have a couple of formulas. The best one in this case is going to be speed equal to frequency multiplied by wavelength. Frequency was calculated there is two and the wavelength is one is given previously there. You have to calculate it actually, you get it. Né? And then the answer is two meters per second. Guys, really, really easy. And with this, we are done with question three. I hope it helped. It's really, really easy. So we're going to do question four, and then we're going to finish this uh, short video. So the following figure show part of a silky spring that vibrates backward and forward to generate the part and illustrate it. And now we're talking about longitudinal wave. Identify the position of any rarefaction and any compression in the wave using letters A, to I. So very simple. This one here represent a compression. Okay. So I'm going to write it there. Compression. I wanted to see you. That will be letter C. 
and then the rare faction will be letter E. Be careful because all the other letters are not really in the center. So it is very, very tricky. So this one is the rare faction. Okay, so we have the, the rare faction and we have the compression. Question 4.1 is answered. Next question is what is the magnitude of the wavelength of the wave? Now, no, the wavelength will be the distance between any two consecutive compression, which this is the case, that is one wavelength or any two consecutive um, rarefaction, okay? Which if you come here and calculate is a 10, 20, 30, and 40. So in this case, wavelength is equal to 40 centimeters, guys. 40 centimeters, that is nothing to say, it's quite simple. Or if you if you want to make sure, you can say also here, let's let's say with the rarefaction. So it will be from half of one rarefaction to the next rarefaction. Look here. 1, uh, sorry, 10, 20, 30, and 40. So it's going to be 40 centimeters either way to do it. Okay? So that is important. Now, if the speed of the wave in the seal in the slinky is 2 meters per second, determine there determine the frequency of the wave. So, what formula we're going to use? The same as we did in the previous question. Frequency multiplied by wavelength because we have everything here. We're looking for frequency. The speed is a 2 meters per second, so it's 2 equal to frequency multiplied by wavelength, which is what you got there, 0, 0,4. You have to convert, you cannot work in centimeters, okay? So, this one here will be 0, 0,4 meters. All right, so frequency will be equal to 2 divided by 0, 0,4 and that is equal to 5 hertz. Simple. So far in this question paper, we did not deal with anything complicated. This is, I just want to do this one to know that this, this question, the question 4.3.1. And question 4.3.2 is calculate the period of the wave. And period of the wave, let's do it here, period is equal to 1 divided by frequency. And you just calculated frequency. It's 1 divided by 5. And then the final answer is going to be 0, 0,2 seconds. And we are done. This is the end of this video. Very simple. We solved four questions that was asked in the question paper just now. Uh, this past Friday. Today is Saturday, so it was yesterday. I hope it helped. I hope it helped. Thumb up. Subscribe for the channel. I'll see you next time with the second video of this question paper, Mr. G here.